There's, of course, a 10-point scoring system. The fight will be scored by the three judges. And the ringside physician has the authority to stop in, get the fight out of the way at any time if he feels it's necessary. Well, we talk about Terry Norris, and he is in there tonight against the guy who really wants to prove himself. But as we said, Norris just seems to be getting better with every outing. Terry Norris takes an eastern road trip tonight. The San Diego native sizzled in his last bout against Buster Drayton, a former world champion. Norris's credentials are impressive, too. He's got high world rankings, an NABF title, and vision of a world crown. To keep them, he'll have to fight just like this and not look past pinch hitter Ralph Ward, who sees opportunity in this fight tonight. Ward wants to sneak into the ratings. So then, Dave, let's talk about the keys to this fight between Ralph Ward and Terry Norris. Terry Norris has to make sure he avoids the letdown and doesn't take a look at Ward's reputation. He's got to be strong. The hand speed for Norris has always been a strength. It must be again tonight. Ward wants to counterpunch because Norris should be right on top of him. And he took the fight on short notice. Conditioning could be a factor one way or another. He's got to make it a plus tonight. I'll say he took it on short notice. It was just two days ago on Sunday. He was sitting jaunty jolly in his apartment. And suddenly the phone rings. Said, how'd you like to fight Terry Norris? He said, why not? I'm in training anyway. May as well go for it. Here's Michael Buffer to meet these two. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Showboat Hotel and Casino here in Atlantic City, New Jersey tonight. Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. These belts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, and the Chairman is Jerry Gormley. The three judges tonight are Phil Newman, Eugene Grant, and Frank J. Cairo. Chief Physician to ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Also in attendance, Dr. Eric Wormser and Dr. Dominic Coletta. The timekeeper for all the bouts is Lindsay Tucker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with 10 rounds in the junior middleweight division. This bout is refereed by Rudy Battle. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the white trunks and weighs 156 and three quarter pounds. He's from right here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. His professional record, 12 victories, three by knockout against only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralph G-Man Ward. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with white letters, he weighs an even 155 pounds from San Diego, California. As a professional, 20 victories, 12 by KO, against only two defeats. He currently holds the NABF title in this division. That title is not on the line tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Nora. Okay, gentlemen, you've both received your pre-fight instructions. I'm looking forward to a clean contest. Watch your low blows and watch the holding and hitting. Any questions? All right, I want a clean fight. Good luck to you. Let's shake hands. So there's a look at Ralph Ward. We mentioned he took this fight on Sunday, but he was supposed to fight next week. So it's not like he wasn't in the gym, and it's not like he wasn't preparing for a fight. He just had to rush it a little bit. In the other corner, Terry Norris. And I think it's fair to say Norris using this fight just to stay sharp, just to get himself ready for an eventual title shot. And he pretty much has been assured that at some point in the not too far distant future, he will have that shot. Uh, that's what Kevin Watts thought uh, as far as a taking busy fight when he came in against Irish Steve Collins. And the surprise is always possible. You know, when you look at the conditioning aspect of Ward that we mentioned, he's never been more than eight rounds, and this fight is going 10, so he'll be in strange territory if it goes to distance, and Norris has been 12. And Norris, as we said, and at the risk of being redundant, just seems to be getting sharper with every fight. He was very sharp against Buster Drayton. As a matter of fact, we talk about sharpness. He has the second highest connect percentage of any fighter that we've seen this year on ESPN. You figure in the vicinity of 50% for his shots, which is good in any sport, too, as you can see, not just basketball, but it will make you very successful in boxing, too. Now, conversely, Ralph Ward has been a fighter who has been very busy. He throws an average, according to our punch profile people, of 82 punches around when we've seen him, and I think it's fair to say, Dave, he's going to have to stay that busy tonight as well. And it will be a matter of who does get off first in front, because if Norris has the edge and hand speed that we would anticipate, then Ward would have to be sharp in the countering sense, and can he do that? 
Ward trying an uppercut. Ward trying to stay at long range here. <laughs> Making Norris lunge for him a little bit early on here. Counter left by Norris. Ward is right there, actually, and for he's, both hands. He shouldn't be trading at this juncture of the fight. He got caught with the left hook. And maybe his guts could be a little bit too much right now. Let him up, let him up. Step out. I think there's a tendency, and it's interesting to note when we talk to these fighters the morning of the fight, that when they do get on national television, when they are here on ESPN, they feel sometimes that they have to do a little bit more and be a little bit more of a battler, even if they are a boxer like Ralph Ward normally is. And you'll see that especially in the early rounds as the anxiety stays up there. Now, Ward turning southpaw for a little bit. No purpose at all in it so far. Ward did have a fight back in April, whereas Norris fought in March. And Ward scored a good win over Earl Hargrove. Yeah, very good win. Hargrove was a guy who came in with something like 26 knockouts and 28 wins. But the first round pretty much belonging to Terry Norris here. Largely a feeling out process, but Norris, I feel, got the better of it. People change, buying habits change. But after 34 years of serving the Metroplex, Lee Jarman Ford is still the best place to buy a new car. You'll find a great selection, a relaxed atmosphere, and good, honest, professional people. Here you can forget the pressures and the hassles. Just pick the car you want and get the price you're looking for. Like well-equipped Escorts, just $78.88. And well-equipped Rangers are just $87.88. No hassles, no gimmicks. Just good old American values from your all-American dealer, Lee Jarman Ford. J.G. Boyd offers you the biggest selection of quality widescreens in Dallas. J.G. Boyd. Savings and selection on big screens and more. J.G. Boyd. Two scheduled for 10, and Terry Norris comes out winging with the left hand. Ward did try to battle him in the first round, and whether or not that's ill-advised remains to be seen. Take a look at our punch profile from round one, Dave. And the percentage belonging totally to Norris, 35% to 14. And notice economy of punching versus the wasted shots of Ward in round one. Ward did slip an uppercut in a moment ago, but it didn't really do any damage on Norris. But what Ward is going to be doing is hoping that Norris makes some kind of a mistake, and Norris hasn't been making many. Norris, as you can see, far more proficient in the knockout area than is Ralph Ward, but Ward, of course, with the only the three knockouts in his 12 victories. I think that's a nice knockout ratio for a fighter in this weight class. 100% uh, indicates too many weak opponents, and 20% indicates not enough power. Saw a quick left hand a moment ago from Terry Norris, who now seems to be picking the tempo up a little bit here in the second round. <laughs> Ralph Ward finding himself having to react to the quickness of Norris. And there you see a lunging counter right hand, but from a distance, and it came up short. <laughs> Slapping right hand lead by Ward. Incidentally, you might notice a lot of this fight thus far being shot from the ringside angle, a low angle, and that is because one of our two cameras that give you that high shot that you normally see in boxing is down right at the moment. So we'll bring it to you from this angle and occasionally go to the one camera that we have up top. Kind of an interesting angle, though. You can really see some close-up action. You really see the faces, the grimacing, the, and you hear, almost can feel the impact of the punch. <laughs> Ward goes southpaw again for about the third time. <laughs> Always changing right back. Rudy Battle has had to tell Ward to keep the punches up on two occasions now. 
And that switching so far by Ward is more a sign of confusion than it has been a strategy so far in the fight. It illustrates he's trying to think of different things to do against Norris, but he can't find the right solution. Norris gives you two obstacles which are difficult to face. He's got speed and power. And everybody talks, and we talked about the fact that Norris can't look by Ralph Wood, and he's just not the type of guy to do that. He's a very dedicated fighter. Matter of fact, he said he put more road work into this fight than he did against the last fight against Buster Drayton. And so far, it is showing for Terry Norris. Two pretty good rounds for him. We'll be back. Barry Tompkins with Dave Bontempo back at the showboat here in Atlantic City. Round three, Terry Norris in the dark trunks, Ralph Ward, a local product in the white trunks. First two rounds, I think it's fair to say Dave belonging to Terry Norris. His punches have been sharp, they've been accurate. He's been poised, and he picked up the second round from the first. <laughs> finally got a right hand punch and he's got to get a lot more of that when Norris is just off for one second Ward has to make him feel a right hand punch profile from round two that's pretty awesome for Norris there if this was something like the NBA you'd have a 14 point lead at the end of the quarter with 60 seconds. big right hand by Norris and Ralph Ward's in a whole bunch of trouble here. Ward scored with a lead a moment ago, and then Norris countered brilliantly, and that started things for him. Ward in trouble. He should be trying to hold on here. He's showing a little bit of naivety of being in tough situations. Oh, a big left hand by Norris again. And what Norris is doing here is bringing out the macho type, I'll slug with you attitude of Ward which is good for him, but not very healthy for Ward. Right hand to the top of the head drops Ward. That stunned him more than anything else. I don't think he's any more hurt than he was. And that's twice he's been in real trouble this round. Ralph Ward is disgusted. He's probably a real emotion, but that right hand hurt him. His arms are wide open. He's walking into things and he's fighting. The wrong type of fight. Maybe much too late for him to realize that now. But we mentioned in the beginning he had to counter and he has not been doing that. Well, to use a racetrack analogy, and the more I watch this fight, as Rudy Battle again tells Ralph Ward to keep him up, it's the old story of a claiming horse is not going to win the Kentucky Derby. And I really don't mean that as any discredit whatsoever to Ralph Ward, but he's just in there against the thoroughbred tonight. And in a, a, same analogy from that sport, a going to the front with a speed horse, which is not really the way he wanted to fight here. <laughs> Ward is going to have to think of longevity and holding on and surviving another, if he wants to be in the fight at all. Another left hand by Norris staggered Ward once again. And a great jab by Norris. Norris's punches just in the last three or four times that we've seen him fight just have gotten sharper and he just seems to be pronating that punch a little bit more, just turning that punch and just seems to have more power. Fighting with such confidence. End of the third round and another big round for Terry Norris. When you talk about the rhythm that he's got, all coming from the confidence because he's been looking better and better every fight and you start doing things instinctively that just seem to come to you at the right moments and he's showing you that so far tonight so it's a lot of experience in the corner of ralph ward but all that experience may not help their charge in this case Carmen Graziano talking. You one and two punches at this game. You got to put them in in bunches and get off and slap, all right? Off you Bill Johnson doing the talking now. He's, Come out, you just see his right glasses in the corner of your screen there. Punching bunches of course, Eddie Aliano, one of the most experienced cut men in the business. Jab, jab, lift the elbow up and right hand. Stay. Think, concentrate on that. Jab. Ward. Ward getting stung on top of the head by Norris. I think perhaps the next sequence of punches that didn't necessarily put Ward down but did wobble him probably even more effective than that. Now Norris all business here as we start the fourth round. What's been impressive about him is 
his punching range. He doesn't waste the shots from outside. Remember that first round stat? 26 punches thrown to 50. And he was much more effective with his 26. He won't throw the punch until he's in the right range for it, and then he makes the most of it. He says himself that he can feel himself improving with each fight as we look at the jabs through round three and round four. He's a guy who really is going to have to make his living by his jab, and he's just not doing it. He's not finding any type of punching distance off the jab and nothing to keep Norris away from him. And meanwhile, Norris with the left hook, which is his big weapon. So add up 70% thrown versus 70% received. You've got a deficit. <laughs> yeah, it's fair to say that. Ward not used to paying for his mistakes as he has tonight against Norris. And you can just see Norris sit back and wait to counter right now. If he's off by a split second, he's paying for it with the left hook. And he's used to doing it the other way, dictating. <laughs> is both quick and strong by and, and the thing that will expand his career more than that left hook is that when he senses he has missed, the right hand comes up and he's there to block anything coming back at him. Thinking two ways all the time. Yeah, the most basic rudiments of this sport, of course, are hit the man and don't get hit yourself, and that's exactly what Terry Norris is doing tonight. But in most fighters, offense takes over, and the more offensive-minded a fighter is, the more he usually gets hit. That's why the exciting fighters have short-lived careers. Well, for why they needed a year to make every Rocky movie. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they had to repair those cuts. <laughs> Ward just trying to flick that jab off. Now he's going southpaw without a purpose, and he's wide open as he walks into his shot. And the problem, and one reason to explain his lack of jabbing effectiveness, is that when he steps forward, he's getting hit, so it's making him more tentative. He's throwing it before he needs to. So it's more of same, really, for terrible Terry Norris, and I assure you the word terrible is merely a nickname. And 70% of these have been landing throughout the fight. That one from a wide angle, and the more damaging ones have been from in close. So Ralph Ward continues to try to figure out the mystery that is Terry Norris. The other side of that coin is that Ward has been no mystery at all for Norris. And as you can see on the card of Dave Bontempo, what you call your no contest. On the route so far. Big right hand again. And Norris establishing that really here for the first time. The left hook has been the weapon throughout most of the fight. That time Norris got that left hand up after throwing his own right. Come on. Big problem for Ward is he's got to be a stylist to win the fight. He's only got two knockouts in 14 fights. And now he's trying to do it with some power and he's over the top. And that's not his personality in there. The way to defeat the left hook of Norris is to left hook himself, but it's not a good punch for him. You may see Norris trying to go to the body a little bit more if he wants to get Ward out of there. It's probably the only thing that's kept Ward in standing so far with everything he's taken. But Norris won't get close to the body if Ward decides to circle around and survive like he is here. Norris in one of those situations where you, a fighter kind of takes a blow. I've seen many fighters do that for a round. Whether or not Terry Norris is doing that now, I don't know, but he has slowed the pace for the moment. Especially when the results have been consistent throughout the opening rounds. Yeah, it's almost as though he's just sitting back waiting for Ward to make a mistake. 
figuring he doesn't need this round necessarily. If it was 2-2 two -two or something, he might be thinking differently. But also, with Ward trying to survive, he's not going to enable Ward to get lucky. Norris found a home for that left hook a moment ago. <laughs> there may be no more lonely feeling in athletics than a non-power puncher whose jab isn't working and all of his skills are not working and he's up against a power puncher like Norris. Yeah, it makes it pretty easy pickings for Norris. That's been the story of the fight. It was a right hand lead that got home by Ward, but again with little impact. And here's a look at Terry Norris now. Oh, good job, good job. Yeah, thank you. See him with his mouth open, sucking for air? Mm -hmm. All right. That's all you want to work on. Take a deep breath, man. Man, deep you're deep listening breath. to Joe Sayadovich. Eyes and your right. Good round. Good round. Pressed in the rest of the corner. Well, the Norris Sr., his dad, Abel Sanchez. Yeah, he's not going to get a chalkboard talk so far. He's doing everything right. They're telling him to remain poised, not to open up. The opportunity will come. And from the standpoint of conditioning, all the strength should be with Norris on top of everything else he's doing well. Norris, effective throughout the entire round. The big right hand finally scoring behind the left hook which has been his big weapon so far. Six. Round number six. Put your hands in there. Round four to the white trunks. Terry Norris in the black trunks. Now fighting in close. If he can get some punches off, probably would not be a bad idea for Ralph Ward. It's not usually what the taller fighter wants, but it's something he hasn't tried yet tonight. And the punch profile through the first five rounds tells you just about all you need to know about this fight. A gigantic edge for Norris's accuracy. Left hand inside by Norris that time as Ward tried to do exactly what you said a moment ago, Dave, and that is get inside and he paid the price. Ward pushing his punches now. And for Ward to be in this fight and be thinking about having the shot to win it, he would have had to establish the pace and be ahead here in trying to fight off the rally of Norris. He can't do anything to discourage Norris from coming right at him. Norris shook his hand a moment ago, so he might have hurt his hand. But that's a little consequence at this point. And again, Terry Norris just waiting to counter. And he did it that time as he was backing up against the ropes. Ward has taken some pretty good shots to remain standing so far. With what was happening to him, he could have been out of there a couple rounds ago. It's got to be a very frustrating feeling for Ralph Ward, knowing it's not as though he isn't in there giving it his best shot. It seems as though everything he's tried, he's paid the price. Paid the price with a left hand there. And another. And the quickness of Norris you're seeing is a major factor here. And if a Ward does want to try something, it's out of desperation. It can't really be done with any type of planning because he's reacting to everything Norris does. Norris is just very sharp offensively and covers up very nicely defensively. Look at the hands on both fighters. Watch how Ward's are spread apart. He's not taking the disciplinary step when he gets done punching of bringing his gloves back. Norris does that. That accounts for a major difference in our wide percentage difference in the punches. You're holding it here. Another thing about Terry Norris that strikes me, Dave, is he, he always seems to be on balance with his punches. He sets down on his punches very well. So we come to the end of the sixth round, and at the risk of being repetitive, it was another big round for Terry Norris. Some guys make it look easy. They've got the new moves. 
the hot hand. Because they've got barbecue bag charcoal briquettes from Kingsford. Just light the bag for one barbecue's worth of premium Kingsford charcoal. To score some easy points, pick up barbecue bag. Just fire one in there and you'll have this game in the bag. Barbecue bag from Kingsford. What the pros use. Some more of the Terry Norris show. As he's backing up, he lands a stinging left and then tries to get the right behind it. That one hurt Ward even though it didn't land flush. It was kind of a, an arcing angular blow. And again, to, to go back to what we started to talk about right at the end of that round, it does seem that Norris is always on balance with his punches. It's part of the patience and confidence that he's gotten. Here's a stat for Brick City. Ward was 0 for 19 in jabs in round six. First time I've ever seen a boxer bageled. A shutout. You have to give Norris a lot of the credit for that because he subtle body movements, he'll see the punch, he'll get out of the way, and he's in position to throw a counter shot back. Part of the balance you were describing. One mistake he doesn't make that a lot of fighters do. He does not lean too far forward, and that's why he keeps his balance. Yeah, you rarely see him lunge at punch. If the punch is too far away, he just won't take it. And he's also in no hurry to try to get Ward out of there. Joe Sayadovich, a couple of rounds ago, and you might have even heard this, say that you look at him breathing through his mouth as you take a look once more at Ward's jabs and his fights. That's, that's, that's the give part of it. That's what Ward's given, that's what he's taken. 64% back. And a low blow, so we have a momentary timeout. Ralph Ward says, I'm okay, and we continue. Despite that, he stands up and he wants to fight, and you have to give him some credit for that. He took a big right hand, and Ward is in trouble again. Regardless of anything else that's happened, Ward's hard is in this fight. Yeah, that's what I mean. He hasn't given this fight to Terry Norris. Norris has just gone out and taken it. When you look at the posture of Ward, it starts with the jab. His jab is a pouring type of a punch, and he's not really moving Norris back with it. Sets him up for all types of counters, which Norris is only too happy to wait for. Ralph Ward will have another day. He's a very likable young man. In fact, he said this morning when we talked to him, a lot of people say, why do you fight? You could be going to school. You're a smart guy. Well, sometimes a uh, manager's eyes can be bigger than his stomach, and they saw opportunity here. They went after it, and they're realizing that this is a tough task. It's so hard to make that shortcut to get to the top, but it's so appealing to a fighter and his management. Yeah, everybody feels this is my chance. I can do it. I can make up for three years of uh, bad fortune with one good win. Some can reverse it, but on a percentage basis, most won't. Yeah, and he's in there tonight, not only with a proficient fighter, but with a hungry fighter. And that combination is tough. You know, they were kind of hoping that they would catch Norris not hungry. Catch him a little bit off tonight. That's always the hope. Yeah, but when we talked to him this morning, did you have any doubt but that he was hungry? So we come to the end of the seventh round, and the story is as the story was. Terry Norris. Norris can telegraph this punch from long distance, and it still lands effectively. Notice, he did not follow up and gamble because the opportunity wasn't there. That punch, incidentally, came right after the momentary timeout for the low blow. So it's the eighth round, and Ralph Ward can take some solace in the fact that he's still there, although he needs a miracle. Well, the problem is you can't get a whole lot of three-pointers in this. That's right. It's hard to come back. And that's one story of the fight. And Ward is hung in there pretty well, but Norris has turned out to be superior. You know, when you have a slugging reputation, there's always that chance for that thunder in a bottle you might get with one shot. But for a finesse type of a fighter, and Ward only has the two knockouts, everything has to be perfect if you're going to win. Yeah, and as you said, 
If he's going to win, he would have had to take control of the fight early in the fight. Of course, that hasn't happened. And again, it isn't for want of trying. It's just that he's in there tonight against a guy who's determined to be a champion and looks every bit the part of it. And a big shot there, and Ward's in trouble again. Norris caught him off balance. Actually, if Norris would gamble a little bit, he might put Ward out. There's another opportunity. He did let Ward off the hook there. A lot of fighters will tell you that if they've thrown a lot of good offense for four or five rounds, that the mouthpiece goes out and will have the mandatory timeout by New Jersey rules as it gets washed and put back. And that, of course, greatly to the advantage of Ralph Ward, although he wasn't really in any serious trouble at that point. A lot of fighters will tell you that if the fight goes four or five rounds and the best knockout chances have been there, they may psychologically get ready for a decision. Body shot by Norris. If Norris really opened up to the body and then went upstairs, he probably could end this fight. On the other hand, he's so far ahead, he's not taking the shot. Big right hand as Ward bounced off the ropes and right into the right hand of Norris. Again, Ward caught off balance more than hurt. Ward again to a soft ball for the moment, takes a right hand. At this point for Ward, getting through the final bell would be a victory in itself. Well, as you said, he hadn't gone past eight rounds, so with the next round, he'll be in some new territory. With one more gigantic headache. That's right. So the end of the ninth round, and we'll walk you back into the corner of Ralph Ward. The end of the eighth round, I beg your pardon, coming to the ninth. Remember the keys to victory we spoke of? Well, so far, Terry Norris has, does have, while Ralph Ward hasn't, but may be. And the conditioning for Ward may end up being just that he gets through the fight instead of being knocked out. Uh, the hand speed has been there for Norris, and he certainly has avoided the letdown. It's always a big point. We see it so often. Fighters on their way to something, negotiations underway, they get beat. The right hand from Norris coming in, and Ward was leaning in. He got hurt there. Off balance, the left hook comes in also. Norris did not follow up, but there were several opportunities there. He could have. Yeah, it was a strange shot, actually. It looked like it bounced off Ward's shoulder and then to the head, but it's still staggered. Ward was doing a dance just to stay up. Ninth round. And in Ralph Ward's corner, they were realistic. All right, let him go, let him go, let him go. Heard one of his people say to him, who knows, you might get lucky and knock him out. And the numbers do tell the story in this case. Norris just getting off quicker and harder. The crowd here at the show, but sort of watching this one like a jury. That's the outcome from a decision standpoint so far. No, no doubt at all. And they got their big excitement in the first five, especially the third round. Oh, oh bounced off the rope, hit him with the right hand, hurt him again. But Norris could be doing more here. Yeah, now here's a case where you'd think he'd go after him and try to get him out of there. Great, great, great time. Let him go, let him go. That was almost a jab that knocked Ward back, and he's in trouble again. Another off-balance shot that caught him the wrong way. There was a right hand, and that staggers Ward. Well, Ward is gangly. Now Nar seems to be going for it a little bit more. Ward's Ward got a long way to go in this ninth round. Left hand 
drives him into the ropes. It's simply a matter of how much more Ralph Ward can take. He might be able to will himself through. His legs are still none too steady right now. And Ralph Ford has survival on his mind. Try to stay away, out of trouble. Norris may be willing to let him do that, at least for the moment. That was a push. There have been several opportunities in this fight where he... He could have put Ward away, but he's been willing to accept his big lead. That might have made Norris just angry enough. Well, it looks like Ralph Ward is going to make it through round nine, which he looked in bad shape just a minute ago. So Ralph Ford somehow has gotten through this ninth round after being staggered on a number of occasions in that round. He's got three minutes to get through the fight. So you think you've got big athlete's foot problems? Like that annoying, itchy, terrible crack, or that awful burn? Well, big foot problems call for big foot relief from Desinex. Desinex stops the painful itching, cracking, and burning of athlete's foot fast. And Desinex guarantees you'll be satisfied or your money back. Money back? That's right, your money back. Desinex, the number one cure for athlete's foot. Fighters are tangled in the ropes, and Norris has a surprise waiting. One of many he's had so far. A night of surprises get, get, get for him. Off. You gotta let your hands go. Throw punches for three minutes, Ralph. Walk so tenth and four. final round now, and it's I'm sure it feels like about a month for Ralph Ward. This is the tenth and final round. Let's have a round of applause. This is when you see a lot of fighters take one more stab at that knockout when they've been content to be maybe a little complacent during the middle rounds. But for Terry Norris, I'm sure there may be some questions here about why he didn't get Ralph Ward out of here sooner. Yeah, very good performance for Norris, but there is that, that but. In a championship match, he would have to take a chance at some point if the situation determined it. Scoring was closer. Alf Ward works a full-time job on a construction crew. I guess you could say tonight he got hammered. I don't know. <laughs> it was a tough night's worth to pay for him, that's for sure. And his conditioning has brought him this far. He fought in April. He was in the gym. He didn't miss any workouts. But tonight, as it turned out, he got thrown in over his head. Norris, of course, the NABF champion, although this fight is not for that NABF championship. And the more dangerous thing he had at risk was the ranking by the IBF of number three. His manager, Joe Sajadovic, will be trying to negotiate a title fight. Ward just got in what might have been his best punch of the fight. It was a long, looping right hand. Had no effect whatsoever on Norris, but it did get there. That was the thing he had to try so many more times during the fight. But it just didn't have any impact for him. And really, the last three rounds have turned into a glorified gym session. Norris said that he had run about 120 miles coming into this fight, and I guess he probably ran another 10 or so in this fight, just chasing Ward. And when Terry Norris looks back, it will probably be the absence of body shots that was responsible for him not putting Ralph Ward away. Some of that due to the fact that Ward was running from the fifth round. Up. We talked 
to Terry Norris this morning about what or whom he would like to take on in his challenge for the championship. He mentioned Julian Jacques Jackson and Rene Jacquel. As this one comes to an end, and we'll go down as a landslide on the cards. Well, Ralph Ford did accomplish going the 10 rounds for the first time. I'm sure we'll see him again. Just simply a case of being overmatched, I think it's fair to say. He earned his, his purse tonight very much, even doubly so, because it was just too much Terry Norris for him. No chance to think, no chance to show any instincts, and very few chances to capitalize on a mistake. Terry Norris does take, apparently at least, that next step toward a title shot, which he hopes is not too far down the road. And the numbers, as we said earlier, just tell the story of the well, fight. Well, Ward could say, I outpunched him. He threw more punches, but he landed far less. And a good accuracy for Norris, maintaining the approximate percentage he's been doing throughout the year. Number two on our ESPN list, as we mentioned. We should have a little quiz of who's number one, shouldn't we? We should uh, list the standings in the agate in the newspaper. That's right. Percentage leaders. Well, I'll tell you, it's Karama Leota. What did I win? Terry Norris on the meantime, awaiting the decision, and we'll get that decision from Michael Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Frank J. Cairo scores the bout 100 to 88. Eugene Grant has the same, and Phil Newman scores it 99 to 89 for the winner. By unanimous decision, terrible Terry Norris. Well, little doubt about that outcome as Terry Norris is the winner by a unanimous, unanimous decision. And again, he moves on toward a hope for shot at the junior middleweight title. We'll be back to talk with the winner, Terry Norris. Dave? Terry, a good performance by you tonight. It seemed like you established the tempo right away with your left hook. Yeah, I did. Uh, he was kind of awkward, you know, real awkward from the start. I couldn't set him up. I could have taken him out if I could have just set him up with the jab, but, you know, he was, he was too awkward. You know? It looked like a few times in the middle rounds you might have been able to go for it a little more for the knockout. Did you feel that? Yeah, I could have, could have, you know, if I had to push it a little more. But, you know, I needed to work, but, you know, uh, it turned out that he was, you know, if I could have taken him out, you know, because I saw him starting to headbutt me, I would have taken him out, but, you know, I needed to work, so I went on and, you know, went the 10-round ten, ten distance. All right, we're going to take a look at some of these left hooks. Tell us what's going on here. Right there, I was just, that was when I set him up on the ropes. He came uh, forward in with his head, and I kind of moved and put a little, a little twist on him, and he went into the ropes, and I caught and counted on him. What goes through a fighter's mind halfway through a fight? You know you've got a lopsided lead, and he's trying to survive. Uh, basically, he's trying to survive, because, you know, the other opponent is losing to do anything. Like, you can tell, he headbutted me several times. You know, he's using his head just to, you know, trying to get, get me out of there. Use his head, he was using his head. Okay, manager Joe Sayadovich, a quick assessment, and uh, what do you think will be next for Terry? Well, I thought he fought, fought an absolutely terrific fight. No need to get hurt against a head butter, and a guy hit low a tremendous amount of times. He fought a perfect fight. Uh, next thing is uh, top-ranked promotions uh, on national television July the 16th against Derek Roland. Okay, thank you both. Congratulations again, Terry. And now we'll take it back to Barry. Okay, thanks very much, Dave Bontempo. And thanks to Terry Norris, Orlin Norris, Joe Seatovich and company. You know, we're going to see more of this young man, a winner by unanimous decision. to test a fiber that's pound for pound five times stronger than steel. So strong, it's used in the protective vests worn by the police. 
hits the fiber that makes up the unique belt of road handler treadlock radials. Strong, great handling road handler treadlocks at Sears. Tough tires you can trust. New Domino's Pan Pizza. Nobody delivers better. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Time now for Ringside Report, a weekly magazine of boxing news. Well, Dave, a subject that Al and I talked about just a couple of weeks ago, but of course I'm interested in your opinion too. This crop of Olympians really seems to be moving along very smartly, and it really does look like it's going to be a very outstanding group of boxers. And we've seen Ray Mercer recently here on ESPN, and last night Andrew Maynard becoming 4-0. You remember him as the 178-pound Olympic gold medalist. He pounded out John Keyes in a six-round victory. It was the longest he'd gone as a pro, and that's the kind of thing they want to find out early in these fighters' career. Not just how they look, but how long they're going to go. Two knockdowns and the sixth gives it to Maynard. I like Andrew Maynard very much. He has a real sense of stardom, too. He really seems to know exactly what success is all about. Also, Michael Carvajal, the pride of Phoenix, got it on over the weekend, and he ran his record to 4-0. And doing a good job against Pedro Espinosa. This would be the last call for Carvajal. The left hook's coming into play, a vital factor in the fight. The power of Carvajal. Notice he's starting to settle down a little bit more in his punches. He's not just flying leather all over the place as he did in the amateur days and there the left hook becoming a critical punch for him once again he does a very good job there on that same card jorge paez now here's a guy who won the featherweight title and has managed to hold on to it starting to win some respect against louis espinoza here of course the respect starting with two victories over calvin grove and they're surviving a cut it was a real grueling and a gutty type of a battle Espinosa coming on in the final rounds to gain a draw, but obviously when it's a championship fight and you are fighting for the championship and not the champion, a draw doesn't do you much good. So Paez keeps the title, the haircut, and everything else. He can continue to go along and roll along with his career. And there is talk that they will get it on yet another time down in Mexicali in a bull ring. That, of course, is Paez's home, and it's going to be a little tougher next time for Espinosa. Uh, the decision would go to Paez if it was that close again, probably. Let's talk for a moment about a fight that was held right here in Atlantic City last night. A legend, if you will. Dwight Muhammad Kwawi winning a fight. He does it over Everett Bigfoot Martin. ESPN fans will remember Martin upsetting Burt Cooper in 1988, a gigantic upset that knocked Cooper out of the number one rating in three world bodies. Now, Kawi, he's not as fast as he used to be, but he's got that savvy, and he's beating back a lot of younger, inexperienced fighters who have the power. Martin, by the way, last night was over 200 pounds, a lot more than he weighed for Cooper, and Kawi was just smarter than him. He may have a title shot coming up down the road. Despite the fact that both might have slowed just a step. That's what the cruiserweight division does. It's for reborn fighters, and Kawi, it's perfect for him because he can't fight at heavyweight or light heavyweight. Cruiser, aptly named. <laughs> and, uh, let's go to the guide and look down the road of what's happening. And this week, really a rather short road. The WBA light heavyweight title is up for grabs in Bismarck, North Dakota. That, of course, the home of Virgil Hill as he fights Joe Lasisi. A lot of people feel Lasisi might be able to give him a little bit of a go. That is Saturday, May 27th, and you can watch it on ABC. Next week, we'll be right back here in Atlantic City. Junior Welterweights, Terrence Ali versus Victor Davis. These are a couple of guys with whom, Dave, you are quite familiar. Terrence Ali, of course, coming into many title fights. You're seeing him here against Daryl Tyson, a rapid-fire, fast puncher, and he's been an ESPN favorite. In fact, more so than any other fighter on the network. And Victor Davis has given us some good moments here on Top Rank Boxing on ESPN as well. They're ending Robin Blake's career last October and a very gutsy, durable fighter. That will be a good matchup next week. And that is next week right here in Atlantic City. Finally, we end with a success story, albeit a painful success story for Greg Everett, a fighter that you've seen here on ESPN many times. He was in Newark and breaking up what appeared to be a drug sale to his nephew, and he managed to track some people down and corner them but in the ensuing melee, he was shot in the foot. So we will look for him in the future, but he is a hero, and a hero in this case, involved with an all-pervading problem in America. This has been Ringside Report, a weekly magazine of boxing news. Johnny Rutherford, thanks for picking me up. Hop in, Leroy Jordan. But Johnny, there's only one seat. 